X and SpaceX CEO Elon Musk says he's moving both of those companies headquarters to Texas. In a post on X today, Musk, Musk said that a bill that California Governor Gavin Newsom recently signed was the final straw. It bans school districts from requiring staff to notify parents if their children change their gender identification. On his social media site X, Musk posted, quote, because of this law and the many others that preceded it, attacking both families and companies, SpaceX will now move its HQ from Hawthorne, California to Starbase, Texas. That's in South Texas near Brownsville. Now he followed that up by posting again on X a few minutes later saying that X headquarters will move to Austin. No word yet on where exactly Musk would move X's headquarters or how many jobs that might bring to Central Texas. X and SpaceX would be the third and fourth companies owned by Musk to have headquarters in Texas. Of course, Tesla and the Boring Company both have headquarters right here in the Austin area. Hey there, my name is Devore Darkins and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing this breaking news that's kind of under the radar because I don't think most people are really paying attention to this. But Gavin Newsom, yes, your governor if you live in California like I do, just signed this bill that does what? It bans schools from having to notify, okay? The, the student's parents, if the student comes to school and says, hey, you know what, uh, I'm no longer a girl, I'm now a boy. The school is no longer required to notify the child's parents, okay? He signed a bill. It's legislation now. It's a law. And so what we're going to be doing is reacting to this. I'm going to give you my thoughts about it, definitely the mindset piece of it all. And uh, as you guys seen, it's already starting to face some backlash. But before we dive in any more to this, you know what to do, like, share, and subscribe. Let's play the video. Tonight, a classroom controversy continuing. The governor signing into a law today, a ban on so-called parental notification policies. Now, stop school districts from requiring teachers to tell parents if a child asks to be identified as a different gender. Hunter Sowards is here now with us with reaction. Yeah, this has been a hot topic. As we know, we've been reporting on it for months. It's not just here, but across the state. Rockland Unified, we know one of those local districts facing legal action over their notification policy. But those I talked to today say despite the governor's signature, this fight is far from over. It's a first in the nation law. The governor bans policies that require teachers to tell parents if their child asks to change their gender identification. So if the child skips class, they have to notify the parent, right? If the child gets an F on all their tests, the teacher has to notify the parent, right? Do, do I have that correctly? Okay. And if the child gets into a fight and hurts someone, they have to notify the parents. Oh, and by the way, if the child is sick or has has to take insulin or is on some type of medication or the child faints, they have to notify the parents. But, but if the child comes to school and becomes confused on who they are, they don't have to tell their parents. Do I, do, do I have that right? Okay, let's, let's keep going. For months, LGBTQ rights advocates rallied outside board meetings, much like this one in Rockland, against the policy. Well, I think with uh, gov the governor signing AB 1955, it's actually going to just cause more confusion. Confusion mm -hmm. led to chaos at times between politicians. I will do You're my out of best. order. You're I out of order. My You're best. disparaging the House. Sparking this heated exchange between parties debating the bill last month, Republican Assemblymember Bill Asaley's microphone cut mid-sentence. Okay, so we are here today because the proponents have said that school districts have passed dangerous parental notification policies. Rockland Unified is one of at least six other districts in the state that tried passing similar policies. Many met with legal challenges. And while it's being praised as a way to protect LGBTQ students from so-called forced outings. If parents aren't supportive of their children, then the children shouldn't have to tell them. Okay, forced outings. So, force. 
force. So if we if we ride with that logic, that means someone has to be forced. So are we going to force the parents or are we going to force the kids? Right? Who who comes first? And here's the other thing. Who's ultimately responsible for those children? The school or the parent? So from a legal point of view, if that kid was to pick up a gun tomorrow and shoot someone, you know who could be held liable for that? The parents, right? If the kid woke up this morning and went to school and got into a fight and broke someone's neck, who's going to be financially liable for that? The school or the parent, right? But if a, if, if, if a child starts to deal with something, and I definitely agree with this, it's a mental, some disorder, some mental health issue, by the way, because kids are not supposed to be confused, right? Uh, kids are very impressionable, okay? Um, and so how do we know this to be true? Because if you're a millennial or older, this was not a problem. This was never a problem in school. The, 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 we did not have this mass confusion, right? This identity crisis, right? This gender crisis. We have it because we're in an age where these kids are exposed to ideas over and over and over and over again via social media and the indoctrination of the rhetoric that is used in schools. And that has superseded the parenting at home, especially if that kid has uh, parents who are not really, um, you know, well, I, I'm not going to go down that road. I'll just say if they don't have parents who have these similar values. How about that? Some say it could interfere with parent transparency. Yeah, the, the biggest sticking point in, in why I'm opposed to AB 1955 is that it's going to uh, have uh, others on the other side try to force school districts to keep secrets from parents. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a non-starter for me. Mm -hmm. Advocate and Roseville City School Board member Jonathan Zacherson says the law may still give districts the ability to decide how to move forward. Cool. This policy uh, still has uh, still allows for a lot of flexibility at the school district level. Yeah, listen, guys, I mean, how many kids are thinking about their gender? I mean, what, what is the percentage on that? I'm, I'm sure it's a small percentage. And this is the problem. This is what's going on in California, by the way. And if you don't live in California, consider yourself lucky, except for the weather component, right? It's the only thing that it's the only reason why people stay in California. There's only two main reasons that I've discovered because my wife and I, we actually went to Tennessee, uh, Georgia and Texas and checked out those places. And the two things that will keep someone here who does not agree with the policies because they have become so radical is because of the weather, that's number one, and family. If it wasn't for the weather and family, this place, that you wouldn't, you wouldn't have any, let's just say conservatives. You wouldn't have any people on the right staying here, okay? They're only doing it because of the weather and um, of their family. That, that's the only reason to actually stick around. Let's actually check out this other video, which is pretty interesting. Sabrina Naves came out as transgender in 2018, while she is now the president of PFLAG Sacramento, an LGBTQ support group. When she was younger, she was not ready to be open about who she was. I know that if I had been forcibly outed to my parents, that would have definitely been an, an issue of safety for me. That's why Naves is thrilled. Governor Newsom just signed Assembly Bill 1955 into law. It banned school districts in California from having policies that require parents to be notified about their child's sexual orientation, gender identity, or gender expression without the student's consent. That includes non-binary and transgender students. So we're definitely relieved. So what they're doing is the government is inserting itself between the child and the parent. That's what's happening, okay? From a constitutional standpoint, a, a legality standpoint, that's exactly what's happening. The school is becoming a filter between the child and the parent. Now, what do I always say? What do I, guys, this is the, the difference of progressive policies and conservatives. Conservatives believe that the government does not need to be involved. The gov Think about it, let's use their own logic against them. You don't want the government to be a part of the abortion process, but you want the government to be a part of who like your child and if they have to tell you what their gender is 
right? I mean, that, that it just doesn't pass the smell test. There's no common sense here. And here's the thing. Um, are these children who are changing their gender or identity on the fly, um, are, are they evil? No, they're confused. They don't know what is what. They have not been taught. They have ideas infected into their mind because of social media, because of the language, the rhetoric, the indoctrination that's happening inside of a school. You don't have to go very far to hear this stuff. I mean, you really don't. Just ask anybody who is willing to be straight up with you and honest about what are they teaching in school? And they're going to tell you, and that's going to lead you to see why kids today are more confused than we've ever been. Think about it. Think about your generation. Think about your mother's generation. Think about your grandparents' generation. Did they have these problems? No, they did not. Is there always a small percentage of people who, you know what, I don't identify as a boy, I'm a girl. Yes, those people exist. Are they evil? No, they're not. Do we need to change the laws for those people? Absolutely not. Those people actually need help more often than not. So when the, the, just the mindset becomes victimization. That's one. The mindset becomes let me let you know let, let, let's cater to this one percent over here, and then force the the rest of the ninety nine percent to do the same. But that violates our constitution. Why? Why do I? Why, why as a as a parent? Should I be shielded or prevented from having that responsibility and communication with my kid? It doesn't matter that the kid doesn't want to tell me. That's my business. That's my child in our home. If, if, if they don't want to tell me, that's my problem. I put them here, right? It's my problem, not the school's problem, right? And so what, what they're doing is they're injecting the government into a person's home and it's just going to lead to disaster. When the government is putting their hand in your pocket, into your home, in your conversations, and the way that you parent, it, it's not going to lead to anything good. And sooner or later, there will be a boiling point. I just don't know when that is, but there will be one. So as I wrap this up here today, you know, this I'm so glad that Gavin Newsom is not the nominee for president yet, right? Because who knows, maybe he will be uh, sooner or later. But this is what we want. Is this what you want? You want the government to be a part of your parenting, right? Is that, I mean, what's funny is they focus so much on this, but what about the veterans who are having to pull teeth just to get their disability, but you hand out money to homeless like candy and the illegal immigrants like candy and you soften the crime right? And the consequences of crime in California, right? And you remove a lot of people out of the prison system in California and other people are hurt by that. They don't want to focus on any of that. They want to focus on victimization. They want to go after the people who feel like they are victims and they want to change the laws based on them. And so what happens? The very foundation that built this country goes out the window. That's my mindset about this. What's yours? What do you think about this ridiculous it is a ridiculous uh, law that has been signed by Gavin Newsom. Um, if you don't live in California, I already know what you're going to say. This might not be a surprise to you because everything we do in California is basically radical. Uh, but if you are in California, let me know in the comment section below and what your thoughts are about this. I want to say thank you so much for checking out the video today, and I will see you in the next one.